Hello everyone, this is Robert Weaver and I wanted to present our defense presentation for the blind smoker case. I am working with Casey Dunn on this uh, presentation and let me go ahead and take you through some of our background facts uh, for this particular case. And Bill was walking down the street. He had inadvertently walked into a gas station. He stopped to light a cigarette. Bill is legally blind. He has 2200 vision. He was walking it with a cane at the time of this particular incident. And there are posted signs, of course, within the gas station that says highly flammable, no smoking. Bill goes to light a cigarette from a match that he has, a, a matchbox that he has in his pocket. And he places the match after lighting his cigarette back into his uh, match box. Subsequent some to this, uh, there's some dry grass that ignites on uh, the median. As you see, the arrow shows where approximately Bill was standing at the time. And the there's gas vapors from multiple patrons coming in and pumping gas at the pumps and these flames explode they cause damage to the property and to patrons that are at the gas station and the question that we needed to answer was is bill negligent in this particular case so to begin my research what i did is i needed to first know what are the elements of negligence under ohio law so i found a case and received Anderson v. Stratton Chevrolet in Ohio and under the case notes here and uh, it says in order to establish a cause of action in negligence the plaintiff bears the burden of proving one the defendant owed a duty of reasonable care to the plaintiff two the defendant breached this duty and three that the plaintiff has suffered damages approximately caused by the breach the existence of a duty depends on the foreseeability of the injury. The test for foreseeability is whether a reasonable person, a reasonable prudent person would have anticipated that an injury was likely to result from the performance or non-performance of an act. The foreseeability of harm usually depends on the defendant's knowledge. With this in mind, I needed to know uh, establish what is foreseeability under um, Ohio uh, what is foreseeability mean uh, under Ohio law so what I did is I continued my research and I just did under Ohio law foreseeability was my search term I found the case Hall v Watson and under the case notes here we'll expand that it says under Ohio law foreseeability alone is not enough to create a duty to prevent a third person from ha causing harm to another. A special relationship must exist between the parties to create a duty. Now, uh, and I remember under uh, in our textbook it said that we have misfeasance and nonfeasance, and misfeasance is conduct or an act that is improper or unreasonable. Fail failure to act is called nonfeasance. With this, uh, so with this particular case, I was looking at would Bill be somewhat in in some way liable because of nonfeasance, because he didn't act, uh, even though he has a disability. Would that bar him from acting? Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find anything under. Um, Ohio law that spoke specifically to uh, a patron being blind and would they have a duty to act uh, so with the idea of the special relationship uh, being in place and uh, since this was the um, could have led to a uh, li uh, premises liability case but I didn't want to get off on a red herring, so I kind of stuck with um, the whether Bill would be liable under this particular case and not to get too far 
into the weeds on this particular case. So I just continued my research and I did look up nonfeasance uh, just so I would have a clear definition of what it uh, was under Ohio law. And I did find Phillips v. Uh, American Electric Power, this case. And it does cover this a little bit and um, had note four here. And it says, in a case of nonfeasance, the existence of a legal duty is critical, and unless duty is established, the defendant's fail failure to act can cannot and does not create liability. So with that in mind, that, that really kind of set me back. And I thought this was, that's great uh, case law for this particular case because um, he didn't do anything. If he did, he didn't do, he didn't act in this case. And uh, from what we could tell from the case facts, and that existence of a legal duty is critical. And if because of foreseeability, if there's no special relationship, there's uh, no foreseeability for uh, what happened in this particular case. That could very well mean that there's no liability that's going to attach the bill. And I did want to continue on a little bit with my research just to make sure that I had enough uh, and that I researched the entire uh, cause of action for, for this particular case. So I did look up a defense against negligence and I find, found Sickles v. Jackson County Highway Department. And that expands on the head note here, 14. To ultimately prevail on their claims, they must establish all the elements of a negligence action, i.e. the existence of a duty, a breach of duty, and an injury resulting approximately therefrom. And that uh, really, I felt, confirmed my uh, idea at, at that time. And I did just look up one more case uh, just so I know in general what foreseeability under Ohio law was and I found Davis v. Hollins. Now there is a yellow flag there. There was a clarification uh, in this. I don't want to get off too much on my presentation. It just was a minor clarification. I don't think it affected uh, this particular case law and um, I still wanted to quote it. So under head note 7 here and that says, the concept of foreseeability is an important part of all negligence claims because the existence of, a, existence of a duty depends on the foreseeability of the injury. As a society, we expect people to ex exercise reasonable precautions against the risks that a reasonable, prudent person would anticipate. Conversely, we do not expect people to guard against risks that the reasonable person would not foresee. The foreseeability of risk of harm is not affected by the magnitude, severity, or exact probability of a particular harm, but instead by the question of whether some risk of harm would be foreseeable to the reasonable, prudent person. Accordingly, the existence of, and scope of a person's legal duty is determined by the reasonable, foreseeable, general risk of harm that is involved. And the Tensors Court of, uh, of Appeals, along with several others, have recognized this recent pronouncement as the standard in negligence actions. Generally, the existence of a duty depends upon the foreseeability of injury to someone in the plaintiff's general situation. So with all this in mind, we came to uh, the conclusion in this case, it would be prudent to say that the defendant did not have a duty under Ohio law since there was no relationship between the patrons and the defendant. It would be reasonable for a person to think that lighting a cigarette outside of the area in which gasoline was pumped would not ignite dry grass, which was the cause of the gasoline fumes igniting, which then led to the damages and injuries sustained by the plaintiffs. If the defendant were guilty of nonfeasance, there must be a duty established for liability to attach. The defendant 
was not required to foresee risk that an ordinary person would not anticipate. Therefore, we believe that the defendant would not be liable for damages. And that's our presentation. I appreciate everybody uh, watching, and I look forward to uh, looking at your presentations. Take care.